So just finished today's run and it was only about a mile. You want to know why I only ran a mile? It's because I'm testing the hip injury. Because first off, I ran because I wanted to run. Because I ran last Tuesday and I was like three miles. Oh my God. It was just so fun. I felt like myself. I felt the rhythm. I just felt that I needed that urge. And so what I did was run yesterday, which was two miles. I experienced no pain in the morning. But today I experienced pain in the morning right after PT. So I essentially was like, well, let me take advantage of the fact that I had pain right after PT and be like, well, let me go on a run because I want to be like, well, how does it feel when I experience pain in the morning? And how does it feel when I basically have pain in the morning right after PT and just see how it feels? Because I actually did experience pain in the morning when I got the pain injection into me last Tuesday, but it did go away because they insert it into the ball socket joint, which basically means that there's something wrong inside of the actual hip joint and not outside of the hip joint. And so it went away with that and I experienced the same pain today. And so that basically tells me, and I didn't experience the same pain on Tuesday versus today. Today was completely different. I experienced pain on my run. And then Tuesday, I didn't experience any pain on my run because I more experienced that injection, like a shot feeling. Like, you know how when you get a shot, you feel like the pain of the shot, like it hurts because you got a shot. But I basically had no pain all that day, just the shot pain. But today I actually did have pain. When I first started to run, I felt like my hip was actually going to break on me and then it eased off but every time I basically stopped to walk for the 30 seconds so I did two minutes on 30 seconds off so I did two minutes of running 30 seconds of walking so every time at the start of my run I would basically feel this hip pain not necessarily my hip breaking that was only in the beginning but the pain would just ease off and then when I would start walking it would completely go away but then it would go back as soon as I start running but then it would completely ease off as I continue to run so it only lasts about 15 seconds so then when I was walking back home I had no hip pain it was about a 0.15 mile walk back home. I experienced no hip pain until I probably had about 0.05 miles left to walk back home. I started to no notice this very sharp hip pain that felt like kind of like someone was stabbing me. And it was very uncomfortable, not definitely fun to deal with because it was actually very, very painful. And then I'm at the point I am right now where I kind of feel pain, but I don't at the same time. It's kind of like there, but it's not there. But yesterday I actually ran as well. I ran around two miles yesterday. It says 1.9 seven but the reason it says that is because I when I was pressing lap to know how much time I have of walking uh, I accidentally pressed stop and then I noticed it when I was going on my next run lap or when I looked at my watch so I probably ran around 2.05 but who really knows but I didn't experience pain in the morning yesterday well I didn't experience pain in the morning right after PT I only experienced pain walking around and then it went away it was only there for like a very quick second and so I was like let me go on a run see how it feels I really didn't experience pain I noticed throughout the day yesterday Yesterday, my hip got stiffer it got much more weaker it just kind of lost its range of motion today I woke up with no pain but I walked around kind of had some and then it went away but after PT I noticed some hip pain and so then I was like I'm gonna go on a run so I did and then I experienced pain and so that's basically how the run went I would say it overall went good I kind of miss it I'm not gonna lie to you kind of miss running felt like myself again felt the momentum felt the rush because once I went on a run yesterday I was like you gotta go on a run today because it's just like you got to. I mean, it's, it's, I even wrote it down to, on one of my to-do list today was to go on a run. And so I was like, you need to go on a run because you need to feel like yourself again. And so that was the way I felt like myself. Just having that run plan for the day just feels like myself. Having that run scheduled set in stone feels like myself. Then actually lacing up the shoes, doing a quick little warm up and actually going for a run just feels like myself. I actually feel like I'm actually able to go for a run. I actually feel like myself because I'm pumping my arms, moving my feet, having the right momentum the right strike of my foot for when I go run but that brings me up to when I went to the doctor this Tuesday not last Tuesday when I went to get the injection but this Tuesday to rule out that I'd have a sports hernia so we went to the doctors and basically what happened was we ruled out it was a sports hernia so he pressed on my belly and everything like that he pressed on my inner quad and everything just to see if I have any pain right there and I had some tenderness in my inner quad my adductors I believe he said my abductors are really weak and my adductors Doctors are actually really like not weak. I mean, they're weak, but they're not like as weak as my abductors. I think it's my outer muscle, the side of the IT band is weaker than the actual inner side, which is the side of the meniscus is actually a lot weaker. I mean, the side of the IT band is weaker. The side of the meniscus is stronger, but it's still weak. My hips are very weak. That's what creates a hip drop. And so basically,
basically when I run, I create this hip drop, which can cause my hip to flare up. It can cause this labral tear to happen, and it can cause so many problems, and it can cause so many different other injuries. Because when you have one injury, it can cause another injury to flare up. Because what happens when you are running, you try to mask the pain. How do you mask the pain? By changing up your gait cycle. What happens when you change up your gait cycle? You change up your gait mechanics. What happens when you change up your gait mechanics? You are trying to run a different way. You are trying to walk a different way to mask that pain, which when you mask that pain, changing your gait cycle, you can end up with another injury on the other side or another injury on the same side. And so when you have a hip drop or you try to mask the pain by changing your gait cycle, it can lead to a tear in the meniscus. It can lead to a hamstring tear. It can lead to a calf strain. It can lead to so many different things if you don't take care of your body and if you don't realize that you actually are going to ch end up changing your gait cycle just because of a niggle. So make sure if you have a niggle, make sure you record yourself running when you don't have a niggle and record yourself running when you have a niggle. Why? You might ask, even if you're not a YouTuber or anything like that, record yourself running. Want to know why you should record yourself running? So you can compare your gait cycles when you are injured versus when you aren't injured versus when you have a niggle and see how your normal gait cycle is, see what you need to strengthen, see what you need to change to have the right mechanics so you can prevent injuries, stop injuries from happening, and just heal up injuries quicker. Then you need to compare your gait cycle for when you are injured. See if you are changing it up to really see if you are like really changing it because you're trying to mask the pain somehow. See that way and then see when you have a niggle. Just a basically a minor injury that you can still run up. And basically see how it all compares and see how much you are changing your gait cycle which can cause another injury. That's a little tip of the day is record yourself running to really see your gait mechanics. See what you are trying to actually like basically how you are basically running to see where you need to improve, what you need to strengthen, what you need to improve at and get better. But anyways, the doctor basically said, yeah, you don't have a sports hernia. I'm pressing everything and you aren't really flaring up. You aren't wincing in pain. Your adductors are kind of tender. Your inner quad is kind of tender. But every time I press on something, it, you're going towards your hip. So there's something definitely wrong with the hip. We don't know. I'm going to give the other doctor, the actual FAI specialist they call and tell him and then we're going to go probably go see him again. But who really knows? I mean, if it's surgery, if it isn't, but who knows? I am actually going to cut my calves now because my calves are quite tight from actually running because I'm actually noticing. I feel like I'm actually becoming a ball foot striker and when I used to be a heel striker or actually like a kind of heel ball kind of type of stuff. So when you change your gait cycle or you try to change your gait mechanics for the better, actually like trying to prevent injuries, what can happen is you can actually get another injury from actually changing your gait cycle to a proper, more mechanical way because say you are running on your ball, you're putting more impact, more strain on your actual calf itself. And so, which that can cause, it can cause a bunch of muscle knots, it can cause a bunch of flare-ups, it can cause so much more things to happen to your calf, but as you ease into it, as you get used to it, it can cause less injury because you are not overstriding, you're not getting shin splints because when you land with your heel, it's easier to overstride, it's easier to get knee tendonitis, it's easier to get shin splints because that's just the way it works, which I will actually talk about this later after I actually probably go to work and actually cut my calves and everything like that because I want to talk about it, which is basically saying should you be running a marathon at 16 years of age how young basically should you run a marathon which should you start training at 14 15 16 17 because I actually saw this comment which basically tells me that I don't think you should be running a marathon I will read it to y'all when I get the comment of the day and that will lead me to what the question of the day is but once I saw that comment I was like I need to do this video idea because it is very important to discuss this topic it really is because a lot of people we don't see this as the right way but other people see it as the right way so i really need to discuss this topic but anyways i'm going to cut my calves and yeah thank you for watching today's vlog make sure you seek happiness achieve goals and find glory i will see y'all in the next peace